Despite the significant advances in clean and renewable energy technologies, India remains heavily dependent on fossil fuels today. Conventional sources of power such as coal and petroleum release trapped CO2 into the environment, which is one of the most significant contributors to global warming. And every country across the globe is in search for innovative approaches to reduce their global greenhouse gas emissions, especially CO2. Though India is the leading country working towards sustainability, adopting greener technologies and renewable energy in its energy mix, the government has realized the need to back its approach with a policy framework that incentivizes such actions. The Green Credit Scheme, launched in June of 2023, encourages such voluntary adoption of green technologies and activities from individuals and corporations, while the other credit-based policy framework, that is the Carbon Credit Trading Scheme, or CCTS 2023, aims to regulate a select group of industries responsible for a substantial greenhouse gas emissions and incentivize them for CO2 sequestration and adoption of greener technologies. In this video, we will understand the key highlights of the CCTS policy and the concept of carbon credit trading. The Indian Parliament passed the Energy Conservation Amendment Bill of 2022, which modifies the 2001's Energy Conservation Act. The Ministry of Power notified the Carbon Credit Trading Scheme and will soon be notifying the sectors obligated to comply with the regulations under this policy. This policy will ensure that a percentage of the total energy requirements of these identified entities comes from non-fossil fuel sources. The government will also release the modalities based on the Bureau of Energy Efficiency's recommendations. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change will notify the emission intensity targets for obligated entities upon request of the Ministry of Power. Emission intensity is the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions emitted for every unit of GDP. Now, obligated entities will earn a carbon credit certificate if they surpass the target assigned to them. The Bureau of Energy Efficiency will issue the certificate and obligated entities which are unable to achieve their targets will be required to meet the shortfall by purchasing carbon credit certificates. Non-obligated entities may also register under the scheme and comply voluntarily. The scheme talks about focusing on domestic carbon credit trade. The government has also announced putting a halt on export of carbon credits unless our own climate goals are achieved. As the main design element of this policy are being deliberated, the focus area of the government here is to identify which sectors will be included in the trading scheme and developing emission trajectories and targets for the sectors to be included. And finally, developing a mechanism to ensure the stability of carbon prices. Now, let's look at the highlights of this trading scheme. Trading in carbon credits are the primary recommendation of this policy mechanism with a hint of carbon taxes in the future. The policy aims to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by setting emission intensity reduction targets for these selected entities obligated in alignment with India's nationally determined contributions. The central government will constitute a national steering committee which will govern and oversee the overall carbon market. The committee will be chaired by the power secretary and will have representations from several ministries including the steel, the government entities including Bureau of Energy Efficiency and GCIL. The key functions of the committee will include giving recommendations on some issues to the Bureau, formulation of procedures, rules and regulations for the carbon market, and formulation of targets and issuance of carbon credit certificates. Now, in addition to all of this, the government also plans to develop an Indian carbon market, also known as ICM, where a national framework will be established to decarbonize the Indian economy by pricing greenhouse gases emissions. This will be done through trading in carbon credit certificates in between the generators and those mandated by law to offset their carbon emissions. The governance and oversight of the Indian carbon market will be managed by the steering committee or the Indian carbon market, chaired by the Secretary of Ministry of Power and co-chaired by the Secretary of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Now let us discuss how this carbon credit trading will work. So, carbon credit certificates will be traded on power exchanges registered with the Central Electricity Regulatory Commissions or CERC. CERC will also regulate the carbon credit trading activities between the generator and the purchaser. The Great Controller of India Limited or GCIL will be the registry for this scheme. 
GCIL will also perform functions such as undertaking the registration of obligated or non-obligated entities and maintaining a record of transactions and shared them with power exchanges and the Bureau. The Bureau will then administer the scheme functions including identifying sectors and potential for emissions reduction and developing trajectories and targets for emission reduction. This scheme will ensure monitoring and reporting verification or MRV for the carbon market in India. So to summarize, this table shows the highlight of the roles of different organizations. The obligated entities that overachieve the targets will receive carbon credit certificates while those that fail to achieve the targets will have to purchase these credits from the ICM. This ICM framework will also aim to attract investments in emission reduction technologies and support India's goal of achieving the updated NDC by 2013 and becoming the net zero emitter by 2070. Now, for those sectors that will be included in the trading scheme, it is important to understand what will change when the scheme comes into full effect by 2026. India is a developing country with a rising number of industries. In this era of industrialization, our core industries are essential but they are often labeled as major pollution causing sources. So this carbon credit based policy will establish a market for low carbon products and decarbonize India's large and relatively young industrial base by offsetting the cost of carbon capture. The greenhouse gas reductions requires a multi-dimensional approach. This requires a robust legal framework that can regulate the offset market and this scheme shows a promising avenue for private entities in India to contribute towards climate change mitigation measures and reap the benefits simultaneously. By trading in such markets, businesses and entities can unlock financial incentives, gain a competitive advantage and comply with the regulations while fostering technology adoption, innovation and engaging in international collaborations. Embracing carbon credit trading is a responsible choice and a strategic move towards building a sustainable and a prosperous future for our country. If you have any queries, you can head down to our comments section for discussion and for any business related queries, you can contact our underclimate experts from the details shown. Do remember to like and share if you found our work helpful. Thank you for watching.